Conversations with Artists, brought to you by The Smith Gallery and Fine Custom Framing. Welcome to Art Talks. I'm Debbie Smith. Art Talks is exclusively through The Smith Gallery and Fine Custom Framing. I'm so glad you could drop in on this conversation with Gail Walden Coleman. And remember, if you like it, please like it. And if you want to share it, share it with your friends. And it would be really helpful if you subscribe because we are putting art forward one artist at a time and we need to do it with your help. So the reason that I created Art Talks is because when you as a viewer or a purchaser or as a collector get a piece of art to your house, it's nice to have that conversation that you can remember about the artist, about what inspires them, how they create their art. And it just gives us a lot more breadth of appreciation. And art doesn't create itself in a vacuum. It needs you to make it sing. And this makes our life a much more beautiful place. So sit back and enjoy. All right, so today in the studio we have Gail Walden Coleman. It's so good to have your artwork hanging and it's so good to have you here. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled. Thank you, Debbie. Very exciting, very exciting. So this is, I mean, it truly is what it's about. And your pieces have the energy that I like to have in the gallery. How do you go about creating them? It is definitely an intuitive experience. Okay. And for me, what that really means is I don't know what is going to happen. Okay. Um, my initial starting point would be either a piece of paper, like a gorgeous piece of heavy watercolor paper oh, with yeah. a ragged edge, mm -hmm. or I also have been introduced to some printmaker's paper that it has a tooth to it, but it's not as thick as the other paper. But when I have a blank sheet of those papers, um, I just know there's any number of possibilities. And then all I want to do is get going into it. And, okay. um, in addition to that, I mean, obviously a canvas is good. A shape of something is good. I've been beginning to work more on um, wooden panels that are actually three inches thick. Oh, yeah, I've and seen And I those. like the architectural effect of that. Mm -hmm. And so even though the actual art isn't, I'm not thinking of anybody or anything, but I just know that they're going to be appreciated and they'll find the right person. So how do you come up with a palette though? I mean, I understand the intuitive part of it that you get an idea and you're working with shapes or nature or whatever. How do you work with the palette then? Because I mean, what medium do you work in? Well, first of all, I work with acrylic primarily. Okay. Um, but um, I also, I'm a mark maker. That That's my big strength, my big love. And mark making also then incorporates a lot of other tools. And it can be just lead pencils. Mm -hmm. It can be um, a, a type of crayon. It's not a crayon per se, but it has that kind of texture to it. Um, inks. I, I use a lot of inks. I use gouache, but it's acrylic based gouache. I use pigment sticks. I use pastels and charcoals and graphite. And I mean, it just goes on and on. I use rust. Oh, and then I use, that's interesting. I know, I know, yeah. seriously. And then, um, you know, the wrappers that go around your coffee when you pick them oh, up yeah, yeah. out in the world, if you open it up, they're usually textured with ribs. Oh, right. Well, they I know make what you mean. Yeah. wonderful textures. Um, I just press them into wet paint or I press them into the paint and then blot them on. I use stencils. I, it's just endless. And um, when you were asking about the palette, though, the colors, my initial way of painting was just go for it, let my colors just guide me. And a lot of my pieces are very colorful, but now what I tend to do is a little more restrained. I tend to think in complementary, tertiary colors so that already they're going to go together. Now, I may go away from that, mm -hmm. but when I start with blue and orange, I work the piece up with blue and orange. Now, it doesn't have to be sky blue, ultramarine. It can be periwinkle. It could be a blue violet. The oranges could go toward the golds. So I mean, the whole you know, spectrum. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, I prefer that freedom. I, I'm, I'm, right. Because once I start with one color, that will lead me to the next color. I, I don't have my palette laid out. It, it's something that I just have a little bit of a sense of. And then after I, even if I start with two main colors, there's always this idea of what can I do that would just make it different? What right. would make it pop? Yeah. And when I do that, 
the pieces start to really get a, a, that energy that you're talking right. about. A life of their own. Yeah. All right. And you use different substrates, as you were saying. You use paper and you use canvas and you've started using block. Right. Which is right. very cool because right. it gives you a totally different dimension. Well, the other thing with the, the wood panel, you can work it hard mm -hmm. and you can sand into it and you can gouge into it. Mm -hmm. And even I can grab it and like just have a little more energy that I can apply to it. Um, if I'm working with paper, I'm obviously more cautious. If right. I'm working with canvas, I have to be careful too don't. because you don't want to poke through. Yeah. It, it has happened. No, it has happened. I'm yeah. sure. So, I'm sure. Um, I, but I like it all. I mean, my, my first love is paper. I absolutely love paper. Yeah. And sometimes what I've done is is do the painting on paper and then mount it on the wood. Oh, um, that's an just interesting sometimes way it just to do it. Works yeah. really well. So, as you're creating or in the process or even before you start, is there a muse that you have that you call to? Um, is it something unbidden? You know, usually there's something uh, something in there, okay, but I don't actually usually know what it is. I don't usually have a thought specific to what I'm, I, like I said, the paper, sometimes it's the shit. I have one time I was organizing and there was a piece of paper that wasn't in the size it would have come in when I bought it. So it must have been ripped, some part got ripped off. And it was just like, oh, I gotta paint that. And mm -hmm. I literally I took it from my organizing plan right over to the easel and started working on it. And it was literally one of my most, in my opinion, one of my <laughs> most amazing pieces. Um, that really inspired me. But once I got the paper up, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Right. I didn't have a clue what I was gonna do. Interesting. Um, sometimes I know I wanna paint red, mm -hmm. okay? But normally, and this is weird, I'm just saying this to you for the first time. Right. When I want to paint red, I don't paint red. And I would love to know why I'm doing that. That to is myself. very interesting. I know. That's very it's interesting. Like, it's like, what are you going to do with red? No, calm down, Gail, calm down. So it's funny, for years I've been trying to paint calm paintings, mm -hmm. and I can only go so far with that. And then it's like this inner craziness has to come out. And yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, the colors are piling up and the brightness is happening. And so, do you have a particular place that you like to paint? Well, I happen to be very blessed. I have a big studio. Oh, that's nice. And our house is little. It's a little ranch, but it's a raised ranch. So the lower level um, actually has the picture window and the mm -hmm. door to the backyard. And I just sort of took it over. <laughs> I mean, my husband kind of reminds right. me of that a lot. That's like, okay. Like you've taken off way more than half of the house. <laughs> That's but, okay. Um, you know, I've got it lined it with bookcases and different kinds of utilities for the arts. And actually, I've overflowed from the big room into the garage part, and that also is full of supplies, materials. Well, sure. um, and I mean, artist's work is never done. It is and not. And people don't realize how many, I mean, for you to paint like this, you have to have a lot of materials. Well, you never know what the whim is going to be right. any minute, right? And um, so, yeah, I'm really blessed. I have the natural light. I have lots oh, of space. Nice. Um, I actually have my office down there so I can do computer work. Mm. I, um, my dog, I have a little beagle, Aww. and she has a fenced-in yard. It's her little paradise. Mm -hmm. And so every time she wants to go out, I am going down into the studio to let her out, and then I paint something <laughs> while she's out. <laughs> That's a great yeah, thing. So there's always something, um, you know, in process. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I, I appreciate the fact that she likes to go out a lot. <laughs> works out very well. Is there, um, is there a particular artist that you think of yourself as or if you look at your work is there somebody that you say my work is very similar to mm -hmm. I mean I think people can probably get that idea when they look at your work if there is somebody but I just wondered for you as the artist creating it if you feel like there is an artist that you would emulate if you were I've been told this so I didn't actually I didn't know it I think I agree with some of my work mm -hmm. that there's a bit of a similarity with Joan Mitchell's work okay. and that she is very loose, she's very colorful, there's a very much nature um, theme. I mean, even though, again, it was very abstract, you couldn't tell if it was a tree really, but she knew it was a tree. Um, so I, I don't paint to be like her, but um, she must, and I, I 
I didn't really know who she was when I started right. painting. So I don't know. Maybe our soul's connected in another maybe, life. Right. Um, but then I also get inspired by some of the contemporary artists and people that I've learned from. Um, the two pieces right next to your shoulder there, I took a course with... Oh my goodness, sometimes my memory doesn't come out right. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not going to be able to tell you. I can tell. But he was about sketching in nature mm -hmm. and just looking for themes out there and taught me how to build. And also the black. I, I build a lot more with black in mm -hmm. that, those pieces. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry. I can't think of his name right now. And then um, Diane Williams, she's an instructor out of, an artist and instructor in California. And I started following her several years ago when I mentioned rust. She's the first artist that introduced me into making my own rust paint and working with it. Hmm. And she would take photographs of things she liked and then have a special company make these really large stencils from these photos. Those kinds of creative ideas just grab me. Oh, I mean, yeah. just really grab me. And then I took a few classes with her, and now she's the person that I use as a mentor. And you know, I can reach out to her anytime. That's awesome for consulting. We and each need a mentor. Yeah, it's been inc very, very um, reassuring. Yeah. It's like I just I know I have that safety net. Uh, very often before I let something loose out into the world, I'll just double check her with her. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So, that's really but there's, neat. I mean, I could make a very long list of people oh, who yeah. have influenced well, me, but course. that's, but that's, I mean, that's yeah. what it's about. Like I said, everything, everything we do, when you create a piece of art, you're not creating just one piece of art. It's your whole life accumulation oh, totally. that totally. you put there because it's everything that goes on in our heads and our hearts and our bodies that then end up on the canvas. Well, you know, another thing is, because I, I think it, what I do that is maybe a little different is I often don't know what a piece is about until after it is finished. Mm -hmm. And then I start the reflecting and a piece that has been sold since. But I remember um, a piece was complete and I, I don't, I guess I was thinking of a title. What could it be? What could it be? And then I realized I had been going through something, you know, like an emotional thing, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the story of what I just went through. Ah. But literally, I was not planning it at all. And I mean, literally, there was a figure in the woods with smoke, you know, it was a very traditional um, releasing kind of story, which I don't paint like that, but yeah. this piece was that story. Yeah. So going forward, what, I mean, what do you have in store for Gail? I mean as a painter as a painter i am doing it a day at a time mm -hmm. honestly um i also have a real life and you know there are obligations so i don't have the freedom to paint like eight hours a day but i also have never really done that anyway it's just not quite the way my art works right so what i do know is i will continue to paint I'm going to continue to paint right. and I'm going to continue to learn when I'm painting. Right. I think the biggest thing is the, that learning to trust myself. Like I have learned a lot of that, mm -hmm. but there's still a long way to go. And when I put it out there, I mean, obviously I'm not going to put everything out there. Some of the stuff is when you were, it's a big experiment. So experiments don't, you know, some Always of them fail, work. right? Yeah. So the duds, you don't get to see those. But many of my pieces, if I would just trust myself and trust that there's another step that might make it better and just trust that, you know, adding red now would be a good idea. Um, yeah, just, just keep doing it. I mean, it's been, it's been an amazing experience for me in so many ways. And I, I just, I also want to share with you, two years ago, I was struggling with some heart tension symptoms mm -hmm. and we couldn't figure out what was going on. And I had, I remember one night I was just feeling very tense and I thought, okay, I just got this new paper and it was like long and narrow mm -hmm. and it was a watercolor paper. And I went down just knowing I had to do something. I grabbed a feather. I have never painted with a feather before. Hmm. I grabbed periwinkle blue. I had never painted with periwinkle blue. I started putting a few marks on and then I was like, I need water. And I started putting water on it very loosely. 
And what was happening is I was breathing sm smoother, deeper, yeah. uh, more calmly. The tension that I had just been not enjoying mm, right. went away. And yeah. that became a whole thing I did all summer. For months I did that. Um, I did a body of work. Almost everything has gone because I guess I was really in it. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm, yes. you know, my heart and soul were in it. And um, it was very, very soothing. And I still go down there when I have tension. I'm like, time to paint and usually paint with more water. Yeah. Like have it be more fluid. That seems to be a thing that works for me. That's really cool. Well, I'm so excited again to have your work in the studio. And this conversation has been really interesting for me because I, I learned a lot about you and how you paint. And I think that's the whole purpose, the whole purpose of these art talks. And it is a conversation. And the people that are here watching want to know about you. So we appreciate it. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. And you're actually doing a huge service to our community of artists, but also art appreciators. Oh. So thank you, Debbie. Well, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, I'm so glad that you could join us today. And I hope that you'll come back. But remember to like it. Share it with your friends and subscribe because we want to make the art better every single day. And you can contact me at Debbie at fineart2u.com. Until then, we'll see you at the next Art Talks. Thank you.